This is our testing mock-up for testing tapered tuning pins in the pin block of the 33B. And this is not just a mock-up, but this is made from the exact same materials as the pin block that's in the piano. This is a cutoff from the block. These are leftovers from the cap, and this is a piece of the maple covering we have on it. So it's made up of three layers. Um, the first is a common multi-laminate maple block as used in most pianos. Um, we went with this because it's essentially split proof and it does offer a lot of end grain to the pin. The second layer is maple and it comes from an old Steinway upright that got water damaged and these were the sides of the piano. They were made of as you can see, this incredibly well quarter sawn maple. Wow. And uh, so we selected that wood to be the cap wood on the 33B. And it was made up in this fashion. They had a uh, large monoblock piece of solid maple down here that's why we've switched to this but it was capped with a layer of quarter sawn maple that ran perpendicular to the uh, the flange and that in turn was capped with a layer of maple running across it so in this way we have mocked up the original as best I can and reproduced it in the piano as best we can with uh, the one concession to strength. Um, the point about having the quarter sawn maple here at the face is that up here at the top is where the pins apply the greatest pressure into the flange. And by having a quarter sawn cap up here, uh, the pin is given all the advantages of the end grain strength of the quarter sawn, <coughs> quarter sawn maple. And I think the, uh, the upper cap is just to keep things from uh, being exposed to too much oxygen. Even modern uh, pin blocks do have a thin layer of veneer on the top, so. Anyway, I wanted to take a good look at this before I started putting any holes in it, and uh, I wanted to explain the thinking behind it, so let's get on with it. Okay. Now, with the uh, for precision board tuning pin holes in this mock-up, um, I'll introduce you to the tool. What this is is a uh, a reaming tool for I think the larger violin family, um, though it does get rather small, so it might work as well for you know violins, but. In trying to figure out what was going on with tapered tuning pins, um, I discovered a thing called the Imperial Taper System, which runs on a uh, ratio of length to diameter change. So, in essence, if your body gets 
one millimeter larger in the span of two millimeter or 28 millimeters or 30 millimeters that's a particular taper and it corresponds to a two degree taper and in you know um, measuring these uh, it was very difficult to try and figure out what degree uh, taper this may be. I literally had uh, long boards clamped to the table, um, nice straight things, and I clamped a, you know, a pin in it. And then I used this elaborate uh, architect's tool I have that told me that the degree on it was two degrees and ten seconds. And I figured the ten seconds was my error factor. But in looking for a two degree taper, what I found was, of course, the imperial taper system. And what became clear is that by measuring here, the diameter at this point, the diameter at which the uh, tapered segment merges with the straight shank, what I found was that it did, as I say, went up one millimeter in the course of going 28 millimeters. And so that, by the imperial system, pointed towards the two degree taper, and so we were lucky that uh, such a tool was available. This came from uh, that famous guitar outlet that everybody loves to hate, but looks like a good tool. I went the extra couple shekels for that gold finish that they say will make it cut better longer. So, anyway, it's a two degree taper, taper dreamer. And just dropping it into the hole, you can see that it sits tight at the top and uh, has a little bit of side to side, back and forth wiggle, as you would expect something like this. Turning it back does basically nothing, but try turning it around. I'm not applying any um, real pressure. I'm just trying to turn it on an axis and let it find its own its own seat. I assume as it machines away more and more face that the thing will have a tendency to equalize the cut on the faces and oops, we'll it's biting a little bit more, but I'm just you know, I can do this like this if I could do it controlled fashion so but yeah, it's biting in so see that see the shavings coming out let's see here's one an original pin that'll sit like that moment it's yeah, see how that's seating in there it's a good seat it matches Continue. I'm using a little more persuasion. And yeah, see, just the littlest shaving. And the beauty of it is it has this whole, you know, 
non cutting surface that can't help but guide all the rest of these eccentric blades and whew, seems to be doing a very nice job and I do have a bit to go so Now I'm sure I'm going to take this too far, or I'm going to not take it far enough, but this is just the first of the experimentals, and it's all about working out a relationship with the tool, and the materials, and the goal. And oh, see how it's getting really close to my bluing? pins were quite high. The Beckett hole was you know, high by modern standards. So I'm getting close. And as I said, I don't really care if I go too far. This is about getting a good tapered socket. See how the pin likes it. Oh, I think that's. Mm, that's just about test worthy, I think. So. Ah. What do you think about how I'm going to do that? do to try and set this is just turn it into the block let it bite a little bit and uh, gee that's a nice one I like this now the other test was of course taking the pin out. And I'm just sitting in the hole, it's got about that much. close look at this pin it doesn't have spiral threads as every tuning pin you've ever seen might have this actually has cross hatching it was probably done with uh, by rolling it on a file of some sort or a ridged surface but doesn't actually have threads that make it get tighter and tighter if you turn it. But a little bit of pressure gets those things to bite or grip the wood at least, but that's a pretty good pin. So I think we got a winner. Now I will submit this to authority and see what happens. Well, delightful. Authority is pleased. So, let's try doing another one rather quickly and see how efficiently this can be accomplished. Let's see here. I can see where the the 
tool rubs itself shiny. Pressure, I'm like pushing a cork, go bottle kind of then oh, that's really nice torque. And uh, thing about this system is that distance of the Beckett height. The distance that has to travel towards the wood in order to tighten this thing all out of proportion is basically none. It just tightens up dramatically with just a little bit of pressure. So, no, this is a real nice system, and I think this is going to work just fine. A few more details to work out. For one thing, I think in the end this tool is going to be just slightly too long. We have to tap, take off about you know, maybe that much of it so that it doesn't bottom out in the holes. But this is certainly a, uh, a smooth system. <clears throat> and of course, it doesn't take much to take it out again. So, I'm pleased.